think there's something about the soil there that they really enjoy. Now we are going to drive with us and we're just going to drive slowly through this group just so that you can get a sense of how very large it is and how many wildebeest there are. And in fact they stretch all the way as pretty much as far as the eye can see, not quite, but I'd say about I can see at least say four miles into the distance and there are wildebeest dotted over all of the space that I can see. So we'll just ease our way through here. Now I'm going to I'm going to share something with you that I was thinking as I was driving along here and I thought how am I going to express this? Should I write it down or perhaps uh, should I say something? And now, well, the opportunity presents itself. Here we sit in amongst a herd of thousands and thousands of wildebeest, right? And we have watched countless numbers of them being killed this season. Some of us have felt sorry, some of us have felt shocked. Very few of us have felt very happy when we've watched the death, and those that have have been mercifully quiet. But I drive past these things, and what I'm going to ask. Dave to do is to just pick one, pick any one, pick that one over there and just focus in on it there. Any one you like, David, I will follow you. You just choose, choose one wildebeest. No, there's one wildebeest. Look at the detail on it. It's white beard, it's beautiful black mane, it's black tail, the astonishing ability of, that it has to <laughs> scratch its right ear with its right back hoof, the stripes for camouflage, the stripes possibly for maintenance of temperature, those special horns, the perfect design for it to run all the way from the southern plains of the Serengeti up to here, turn around and go back again year after year. Superb eyes, superb smell, superb ears, and a social arrangement that is very interesting. Now that individual wildebeest began, just like all other mammals, as a zygote, a meeting of a sperm and an egg, and then it became an embryo, and then it became a little calf wildebeest, and this one very luckily made it up here, possibly for the third or fourth time. It looks like a three or four year old wildebeest. What am I talking about here? Well, what strikes me is that we look at this group of wildebeest as an amorphous hump of a mass of animals. And when we think of them being killed, we think, oh, a wildebeest died. And I found myself becoming less and less kind of traumatized by the death, and I don't, nobody should be traumatized by it, but I've become inured to it. And yet every one of these wildebeest is a spectacular design. It's a spectacular evolutionary achievement. Every single one of them is an individual, and every time one of them gets killed, it's an individual life that's snuffed out. And I don't think we should necessarily feel sad about that, but I feel that uh, we should appreciate it, and maybe all of you do appreciate it, but I find that over the course of this migration season, it's become quite easy to say, oh, well, they're hunting another wildebeest, or they're hunting another wildebeest. Slightly less so for animals that aren't quite so common. So if we see a zebra going down, Steph had a very traumatic crossing with a zebra today that had half its sort of hind quarters eaten off while it was still alive. And because there were fewer of those, and we see it happening far less, I think we felt a little bit more. But it, it amazes me that we, we have, and I'm not sure why it amazes me, but we have this huge mass of thousands of wildebeest, and each one of them is this astounding little achievement of nature. And uh, I just wanted to share that thought with you. I'm not sure what it means. Uh, I suppose we might transfer it into humanity in our own sort of appreciation of humans and the number of humans that there are in the world. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. 